Hi everybody, I'm Nick from the Earth Engine team, and in this short video I'd like to give you a broad overview of Google Earth Engine. Let's get started. In its most general sense, Earth Engine is a geospatial processing service powered by Google's cloud, and we have some specific goals for this. First, we want to provide a tool that will let you visualize and do computations on very large geographic data sets from local to global scales. We'd also like to use Earth Engine to make substantial progress on global environmental problems that involve large geospatial data sets. And you can learn more about Earth Engine from this link. On all the slides that I'm going to show you today, I'll have some links at the bottom to uh, to docs where you can get more information. Often we get asked the question, why is Google doing this? And the reason is that it's part of Google's mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So we see Earth Engine as like the geospatial manifestation of this mission statement. What is Earth Engine? There are a bunch of components, and we'll do a deeper dive into each of these, but at its core, Earth Engine is a large collection of geospatial data sets, which we call the data catalog. Co-located with the data catalog is compute infrastructure, so a large cluster of machines that we make available to all Earth Engine users so that you can analyze and compute and visualize the data that's in the catalog. To do that, you also need APIs, and so we provide a JavaScript API, a Python API, and a REST API so that you can implement your geospatial workflows in Earth Engine. We also provide interactive apps that let you display the results of your analysis. So if you design an algorithm that you're very proud of, you'd like to share it with your friends and collaborators of the world, you can build an app that will let any user see the results of your analysis. As I mentioned a second ago, the core of Earth Engine is really the public data catalog. There's a lot of information in here. There's all of Landsat, all of Sentinel, uh, most of MODIS, terrain, land cover data, weather and climate data, and uh, of course much more. And to discover what's in there, you can search the data catalog. So here's a link that will uh, take you to some pages that describe what's in there and, and let you search uh, for the data sets that might be important to your analysis. There are a few ways to connect to the Earth Engine service, and most users t choose to start with JavaScript if for no other reason because all our docs are written in JavaScript. But we also provide the online code editor and interactive development environment that lets you easily prototype your algorithms, and you can learn more about the code editor in a later video. If you're a Python programmer, you can also use Colab, and, and Earth Engine is installed by default in the public Colab kernel, so all you have to do is import it and start writing Earth Engine code. The Python and the JavaScript are nearly identical, so if you learn the Earth Engine JavaScript, you'll also know the Python. If you don't want to use one of the client libraries, and we'll talk more about that in a second, you can also make uh, REST calls. So we provide a REST API so that you can make authenticated HTTP requests directly to the Earth Engine servers without going through one of the client libraries. Finally, once you've prototyped your algorithm and scaled it to your area of interest, you might want to share the fruits of your labor with the world, and you can do that through these EE apps. You can build apps with uh, user interface components provided in the Earth Engine library, and the app will be hosted by Earth Engine for anyone on the internet to see, or you can restrict it to a specific group of users. What can you do with Earth Engine? Lots and lots of good stuff, including visualizing your data at local or global scales. Uh, you can do that on a map, you can make charts or even uh, little videos or animations out of the data that you find in the public catalog or that you can make out of the data in the public catalog. Uh, and you can make data by doing computations on images or on features, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. Uh, there um, is machine learning capability in Earth Engine, and Earth Engine can also connect to TensorFlow. So if you build your machine learning pipeline in TensorFlow, uh, Earth Engine can connect to that model and you'll be able to see the results on the map. Uh, you can do image segmentation, neighborhood operations, time series analysis, 
uh, and develop the interactive apps that I talked about previously. And you can download data from the data catalog or data that you compute. And you can upload your own data into your own private rep repository. And we'll talk more a little bit about each of these steps in the following section. First, visualization. Uh, here's a really nice uh, visualization of annual NDVI in Africa uh, done by my colleague Justin Broughton. And you can find his tutorial online uh, from this link at the bottom of the screen here. You can do per pixel computations. So uh, in this diagram, this is just a multi-band image and here's another multi-band image. And if you add them together, uh, Earth Engine will perform that computation pixel-wise. Uh, but there's not only addition, there are many other mathematical operators and expressions that you can use and see the link at the bottom to learn more. Compositing is a very common workflow in Earth Engine. And by compositing, I just mean aggregation over a stack of images or a stack of bands or a time series, if you will, or if these are chronological images. And we call that a reduction because you're reducing many images into one. And this is just an aggregation uh, pixel-wise over a stack. Aggregation over space is uh, something that we call a spatial reduction or a reduce region. Uh, in Earth Engine language. So here's a little region, here's an image. You want to overlay the region onto the image and discover the, the mean of pixels in that region or standard deviation or something. So that's a spatial reduction and uh, then you just get your answer, which in this case is 42. Machine learning. Uh, sorry for the code here. You don't have to understand this, but I just want to let you know that um, there is an EE classifier packages package that has uh, classifiers and uh, regression algorithms in it, such as Random Forest uh, and um, see the docs to, to learn about the other classifiers that are in there. But all you have to do for machine learning in Earth Engine is instantiate the classifier, train it with some training data, and then classify an image with your trained classifier and display it on the map. And uh, learn more about the other algorithms and um, how to do machine learning in Earth Engine from this link. Earth Engine is a little different from other geospatial softwares you may have used in the past because scale and projection are much more flexible. Specifically, in Earth Engine, scale and projection are determined from the output. So if you're using something like the code editor, the projection is set by the map display, which is Maps Mercator, and the scale is set from the zoom level. You might also set scale and proje projection in, say, a reduced region call or an export call. But all those are outputs to the process. So uh, that that's how you are able to mix up images of different scales and projection. And at, uh, when you specify the output, Earth Engine will go and get all the inputs at a consistent scale and projection and do the computation that way. How do you do all this good stuff? Earth Engine provides this client library which has a variety of EE objects and methods in it. So for example, a raster is represented by an EE image and you can do things like the example I showed you previously, you call dot add on this uh, ee dot image, and you can add another image or, or multiply or divide, so on and so forth. A stack of images is an ee dot image collection, and you can do things like the compositing that I was describing earlier. In this case, it's just a median composite in each pixel. Ee dot feature is Earth Engine's representation of vector data. So a feature contains a geometry and a set of metadata properties. And you can do things like uh, compute the centroid of, of the feature. Uh, a collection of features is a feature collection. And uh, you can do things to that collection by doing something like calling dot map. And inside here is a function. And you'll learn more about how to write those functions later. But that is how you do something to every element of a feature collection, or an image collection for that matter. You would map a function over it. And you can learn more about that in our Get Started Guide. It's important to note that those EE objects are in fact just handles for objects on the server. So what happens is when you're 
write some code in one of the client libraries, it turns that code into a JSON request object, which is then sent to Google to Earth Engine for processing. And on the server, the data that you've asked for are loaded and the computation that you've asked for is performed. And then the result or the response is sent back to your client. So uh, here's a computer and you've written some code here. The request is sent to Earth Engine for processing. The response comes back to your computer and then you can display it. The response might be a number. Uh, it might be a chart. It might be a display tile. Um, but the, the point is that uh, this is a fairly low bandwidth operation and um, that lets you prototype very large operations uh, without relying on your own computer to do all the computation. The other important thing to note about Earth Engine objects is that in fact they are just handles for something on the server and therefore you can't mix them with other third-party libraries, for example. Uh, EE image does not work with scikit-learn. You need to use uh, Earth Engine methods uh, for Earth Engine objects, and you can learn more about that in this client and server link. There are two computation modes for Earth Engine. There's an interactive mode and there's a batch mode. In the interactive mode, you're using your own computer and you're getting results back interactively. The problem with that is that there is a five minute timeout and so very long running computations uh, will not work in interactive mode. So interactive mode is useful for prototyping your computation and then when you want to run it at scale over more data or a larger spatial area, you would do that in batch mode. Uh, and, and that generally means exporting something in Earth Engine. So when you export your computation, you're materializing its output. It might be an image or a table or something like that. But the difference is that when the server gets your JSON object, it, it gives you a different execution environment. You can use more memory. Your computations can take longer. Uh, Earth Engine will apply many machines to the task and uh, when the result is done, uh, it will be in your uh, Earth Engine Assets folder or a Google Cloud Storage bucket or in your Drive account. So to summarize, interactive mode is what you would be using in, say, the code editor for uh, a fairly simple computations to, to prototype your analysis. And when you're ready to scale it, you would do that in batch mode uh, with one of the export functions. So, to get started on all this stuff, first you apply for Earth Engine at this link. Please do read the docs where you can learn more about everything that I've just talked about. And um, in the meantime, happy coding.